Good evening. Good evening. Good morning from Florida. Yeah. How are you going? I'm good. I'm really good, actually. Really, really good. Yeah. Excited good. about excited about this full moon. Are you? You're a little, you're a little more nervous. Where about do I start? It. Oh boy. <laughs> full moon in Capricorn. My moon's in Capricorn. Let's just say a lot of things are coming up. Yeah. And lots of different areas of life. Um, yeah. We've also had the craziest weather. Oh, for me, as an Australian Italian who came to Florida to live like this tropical life, I'm like, what is happening with? Okay, so normally here you'll have um, like those days where it's boiling hot in the morning. It's so humid. And so then you have the clouds like build up and then like psh, pours down rain. But like two, three hours, and then it's gone. But instead, we've had like multiple, multiple days of like constant rain. And luckily up here, like, because we're a bit more north than like Miami, mm. we haven't received it as much, but like Miami's flooded. I've really? seen, yeah, I've seen like uh, friends that live there, like taking like videos, like out of their car. And it's like, this is like, you know, the the start of their like car and or like when they've opened their car and the water's like literally here and they're like oh my god the water's about to like get into my car like their <laughs> tires are like halfway into the water um so yeah Welcome a lot of people in Asia. My are wearing boots. <laughs> you're getting Asia monsoons ah, I, I am sign up for that <laughs> Miami it's crazy I don't know I love I the monsoons there. but like um at the beginning yeah. Like a, a couple, like the month before monsoon, it's so hot that you're just so desperate for the rain to come. Like you're just praying. And that first break of rain is just like, oh, thank God. Like it's amazing. It. But then yeah. like after a week, then you're kind of like, okay, like I'm I'm done with it. But it's funny, this year has been much less like, you know, sometimes we will, mm -hmm. get, it will rain all day um for several days in a row or a week in a row or whatever um but this year is you know has, is not as much at all so it's it's quite interesting like the other day when we spoke it was pouring with rain um yeah. since then again we've had like beautiful mornings and it kind of builds up towards the afternoon evening we'll have a dump of rain and then like it starts yeah. over again the next day. So quite interesting, but I like it like this. I'm not sure the farmers yeah. love it though. I think they really need the rain, but uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, for us personally, especially, we like to walk a lot. Mm. Um, we literally walk everywhere. So it's just like, uh, it's just inconvenient. But you know, these are um, maybe very connected, especially for me in regards to Capricorn and things that, you know, are very structured and, you like them a certain way and right. when these uh inconveniences come up and they're temporary it's just uh with the full moon having to release that letting go going with the flow and just yeah letting it happen and finding short-term solutions so that's really the themes <laughs> of what I've been experiencing yeah and I think the Cancer Sun Capricorn sort of that it's it's an interesting axis for me anyway it's my north node south node axis as well so I expect to really be diving into some stuff this this full moon too but I'm kind of going to do what I did for my Sagittarius full moon and just be like coming into it just be really intentional about it and you know be like okay what is this about because you know um North Node is so important, you know, it's really is like our life path and our life direction and what we've come to sort of like grow into and evolve into this lifetime. And so I'm kind of like coming into this full moon period instead of kind of going, oh, my God, it's going to be difficult for me, but I'm going to be like, you know what, I'm going to do all the things I've scheduled time out for myself Um Good going to do my um blue lotus tincture again because I actually really enjoyed that have some particular meditations that are really to do with like my life path and you know being cancer is like how can I lean into those emotions how can I express my emotions better how can I 
I mean, it starts with just acknowledging your emotions. And I know that that maybe sounds crazy to some people, but I can completely ignore my emotions and be entirely in my head and, you know, not be faced by things, you know. I had a therapist once say to me, she was like, does that make you angry about a certain thing? And I was like, no, not really. And I, and it made me think, I was like, should it? Like, should it? I was, you know, yeah, so like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, it is really um, about that. So I'm just being really intentional about creating space for that. And um, yeah, leaning into that and just, again, it is like cancer season. So it is about that, like kind of yumminess and caring, mm-hmm. nurturing. So yeah, I'm just going to, have some yummy food and coziness. I'll probably be in my pajamas for that whole three-day period, you know, and just like a lot of self-care and, you know, just things that make me feel good and creating that that. space for for new ways of being, creating new neural pathways and new patterns, new behavioral patterns and things like that to be more aligned with my life path. So, yeah, that's what I'm looking at for, for that kind of that kind of thing yeah I feel like me personally I mean I do this normally like around every full moon but this full moon in particular because it is with my moon Mm -hmm. um I like to actually like look up questions that are specifically around and maybe not questions but like journal prompts on specifically like what can I release and like go of because that's a very big theme with with the full moon and so anybody that's listening can do this as well you can go and look at your birth chart you can have a look at like which house um maybe this full moon is occurring in. see some of the themes that are associated to that house um and then look at some maybe and you can even write them yourself you know I like to just kind of sit and intuitively fill into some questions that continue to pop up in my life around that house theme and then just take some intentional time to to journal it out um I really like to get off technology um but more to really get off social media during these times as well because I I personally do notice that I can be very susceptible to my environment. And so I, I really need to like take a step back, not look at social media, not look at posts, not look at news and what's going on so that I can really step into the, okay, what am I feeling? And like Claire said, right, like you said, it's like the, okay, but like, what are, where, where are my actual feelings? And yeah. like be, becoming aware of them. I I feel like that's actually really only been a journey for me like these past couple of years as well like I don't know where in my personal birth chart it shows that maybe this Capricorn moon as well seeing as that's your deep emotions now that I think about it but um you know I only in the past couple of years have I actually been able to be like hold on like I need to sit with my emotions and feel into them and become aware of even where they sit in my body because that can tell me so much about like what's causing that emotion um and feel into them I used to definitely uh run away instead from the emotion call it suppressing them calling just ignoring them um or the opposite having massive explosions over little things and you're like hold on like where did that come from is it a little thing so just really feeling into a lot of that um, full moons, I think are just so personally, they're very emotional. So I'll be wrapped up in my little pajamas and in my little bubble and my candle lit home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that You can picture me like that, maybe with a red light face mask. And, <laughs> you know, that'll, that'll be the vibe. Silk PJs, mm-hmm. cotton sheets, red light face mask, meditations, um yeah and maybe I'll try and get some cacao actually Andrew inspired me from the last Mm -hmm. episode I haven't I haven't done a cacao ceremony in a while so I tend to like them more on new moon but um let's see Mm -hmm. but yeah I mean it's funny because I used to dread cancer season and it's interesting when people talk about emotions because and people talk about being afraid to feel them like I've never had that awareness at all I'm not afraid of feeling emotions but I just 
it, it's not the first thing that comes to my awareness. And so it really does like has taken a practice of like, what is this feeling? Like, how is this triggering me? Why is it feeling? What is the emotion? Where in my body is it? Like, that's a huge practice as well um, for me, because I think if you are someone who has either suppressed your emotions, ignored your emotions, they don't go, emotions don't leave our body unless we feel through them. So they kind of like get stuck and they get trapped in our body in a way, in our fascia and, you know, in our nervous system. And so, yeah, we really, that's a huge practice for me too, is really acknowledging where they are in my body and, you know, releasing them. But yeah, I used to dread cancer season, but now I'm, I'm trying not to dread any season, you know, still have some, you know, still have some issues with Virgo and Pisces season, but we'll work through that one day. Um, you know, but I used to kind of dread cancer season because I was just like, oh God, I'm going to be so emotional. Like, oh, you know, and I just, I didn't love it. I like to be like a shiny, happy person and I don't like to get too deep yeah. in the, the emo-ness of it all. Um, but no. you know what? <laughs> there's there's a lot of power to be to be found there actually you know and I think one of the things as well it's maybe not in your chart but you all are also married to a cancer so maybe that, that sort of like comes in too but yeah so we have the sun um transiting through the beautiful zodiac sign of cancer so in that um, area, it's really the themes of cancer is this like emotional sensitivity and intuition. So it's a water sign ruled by the moon as well. And so it's known for like deep emotional sensitivity and intuition. So it's really like asking us at this time to feel more in touch with our feelings and our emotions, um, to be more sensitive also to the feelings of others. And there's really like just this heightened awareness of moods, um, both yours and other people around you as well. So then, um, of course, there's this focus on home and family. And as I was preparing this today, I just had this like really, I don't know, beautiful, cozy feeling around it. And, um, you know, it's very, cancer is very strongly associated with home and family and domestic matters, you know, so the sun in cancer really is that focus on nurturing, caregiving, and creating just a comfortable and secure home environment. So it's a good time for family gatherings, home improvement projects, um, and just connecting with loved ones, like the connections take on just more of a significance during the season and um, very nurturing and protective instincts. So um, a lot of people may just feel that urge, that stronger urge to take care of others and provide emotional support and really protect those that we care about. Um, so the themes are really like, acts of kindness, compassion, and caregiving. So even if you don't have cancer placements, you know, it's um it's just a good time to lean into that. And um, yeah, again, a focus on safety and stability and security. Um, so cancer does really value security and stability, both emotionally and materially. So um people may be more focused on creating a stable and secure foundation in their lives, um, maybe through financial planning, building stronger relationships, or ensuring their home is like a safe, comfortable space. So I know that at times we've sort of said, you know, Mercury retrograde, if, you know, this is not the time to get in it with people, but this cancer season is really a time that if you do have things in your relationship that you want to sort of go through and sort out and communicate in a healthy way on the energy supports that like it's a very like it's a much sort of softer more easeful energy and so you know your communication is probably I mean we do have mercury in cancer as well so I'll talk more about that but, um, you know, it's a time that you can get together and be like, hey, I love you. Can we talk about this um, from more that place than like, 
can we just get in it and you know tear each other apart kind of energy I don't know if anybody wants to do that but like the the energy of the season kind of supports that so yeah it's really about emotional depth and focusing on home and family so it'd be good I, again, I'm probably biased, but it's a really beautiful sign and it's a really beautiful energy to like, um, to just also like be your true authentic self in. I think mm -hmm. this is like a really great time as well to like reevaluate that. Um, and it's just a really beautiful time to, to get aligned even more with, with your true self. Yeah. Um, I feel like that the cancer space really creates the, the security for that. So going back to your roots, um sometimes can be really empowering as well so and yeah. not gonna lie I've been Alex and I have been itching we're like should we just like get on a plane and go somewhere Italy does keep crossing my mind and then I'm like oh no there's like the Olympics happening in Paris and it's just too much is happening in Europe right now I personally don't want to be there um maybe El Salvador we'll see Ooh, going to hang out with Bukele yeah we'll 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 see if that's if that aligns there's been some interesting stuff coming up about that so yeah. um but on the bitcoin front mm. um you know just kind of like circling back to what we spoke about in the last episode you know we were waiting for that venus Cassimi that may have been with the new moon in gemini maybe like that being a new all-time high being created and it just didn't break above that and um that's okay you know if we really look at it this is just like the post bitcoin halving consolidating period like it's nothing new. It's nothing we've never seen before. That Bitcoin even is above like 55K is incredible. So I feel like from an astrological perspective, we did see, you know, we saw it test now that those seven T's zones that high a few times. And with what you were just saying with like cancer, um, you know, I feel like this time as investors, we are in just a period of time where we're looking for that long-term stability it's very similar to like Taurus energy mm. um and that's why you know you often hear like Taurus and Cancers are like the best together as like your horoscope uh, best couple kind of thing but I think it's just because those energies really match yeah. when it comes to this sort of discussion so as investors I feel like um and I, I don't remember the exact words that you said but just this period of yeah I really do want to look at like my foundations, my home, my things, setting ourselves up for the long term. And I feel like that's really being reflected already in um, just to, when we just even look at, at Bitcoin at this point in time. Um, yeah. It's a bit boring, yeah. a bit boring. Bo Bitcoin is boring us a little bit. I'm but... sorry. <laughs> Bitcoin let's let's talk about that because let's think about how uh, you know, and maybe because we're fire signs, we're like, where's the excitement? Maybe that's why I'm like itching as well to like get on a plane where like this is getting boring. But, you know, if you go and talk to uh, couples, therapists and uh, nervous system therapists, they're like, uh, when everything is safe and feels comfortable and is boring, that's normally the healthy side of things. Yeah, when everything is chaotic are... say that again butterflies are not a good sign butterflies are not always not always a good yeah. sign especially when they're consistent you know butterflies and these yeah. big emotions um and I think that's that cancer just like secure safe Mm. I think that's why it goes with Taurus because they both really value safety and stability and I think yeah. that's why they're kind of seen as compatible signs because it's always a challenge to be you know in a relation and it's look I don't agree with these just one star sign your sun sign you know compatibility there's so much to your chart that you know will align with someone else but um with someone else's but I think you know sometimes it's really difficult to be in a relationship if you're someone that prior prioritizes growth over anything else 
to be with someone who prioritizes safety and security because this is just going to be always going to be at odds with each other so I think that that's sort of where that line of thinking comes from but you definitely better check their other placements too <laughs> plenty of other placements that you've got to look at if you need a little spiciness check where their Mars is so <laughs> yeah. but they're um but it's interesting because I mean it's Bitcoin's full moon as well right so Capricorn Bitcoin's full moon um and it's the early degrees of Capricorn and um and Cancer as well and so it brings this really interesting interplay between the qualities of Cancer and Capricorn so significant insights and opportunities and like a chance for for growth and reflection which is kind of a theme that I see through this period for Bitcoin actually yeah. um and so you know the Capricorn energy is like achievement a responsibility and it's like really about you know ambition discipline responsibility and we've we see that from Bitcoin. We see those traits in Bitcoin. Um, but there's this heightened sort of focus, this full moon uh, on goals, career and sort of long term achievements. And so it's really like it's a time to take a moment and go look how far we've come. You know, look at Bitcoin, how far we've come. Like, yeah, we're upset that it hasn't broken all time highs and gone to the moon um, in the last couple of months. But if you look at where we were not that long ago and also how far Bitcoin has come from 2009 when it was born. And, um, you know, I, I mean, it's it's crazy if you think about some of the things that have happened even in just this year. Wow. And I saw a funny meme also like um, about Donald Trump and his newfound love for Bitcoin. What a coincidence. And it was like mm -hmm. orange man loves orange coin. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I mean, the internet. Funny, like, <laughs> even, you know, even in 2020, he was so against Bitcoin. And oh, okay. so there's been so many shifts. I mean, that's not the, that's not the main one. The main one I feel is the institution adoption and the approval of these ETFs. It really is like a cornerstone moment for Bitcoin. And um, so this is like a really great time to just like have a look and be like, like, let's actually appreciate how far we've come. And also there's this element of emotional stability versus emotional sensitivity. So you've got that with the Capricorn mm -hmm. cancer axis. Um, so the cancer brings that emotional sensitivity, which is amazing as well. And then the focus on home and family, while the moon in Capricorn is encouraging like emotional resilience and practicality. So it's like we need to make sure that we're finding some balance um, in those areas and um, authority and independence as well is a big theme for Capricorn. So um authority structure independence so this um full moon might highlight issues related to maybe authority figures in our lives or um like in terms of bitcoin maybe authorities in terms of government authorities um or even our own leadership abilities and our need for independence and self-reliance so this these are also themes that may come up this full moon and then, of course, every full moon, as Corinne already touched on, it's really about completion and release. So it's a time of culmination. And um, with Capricorn, this might also involve letting go of some of those older goals or structures that aren't really serving you anymore. So if there's something in your life that you had as a goal a long time ago and it's not really aligned to where you're at right now, you know, it's fine to release those. And this is really the time to like assess that, um, assess how far you've come, assess where you're going and just sort of release those, those goals that maybe are taking up headspace or taking up time um, that just don't align with where, where you're going um, anymore. So, yeah, I think that's that's really what it is. I mean, full moons in terms of the markets can always be a little bit sketchy, um, a little bit volatile. And being cancer season, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the emotional yeah, waves of that reflecting in the markets. Um, so we could see a bit of that. But I do think that we will probably, as per usual, find a local bottom around the, the full moon and um, 
I'm guessing I'm, you know, the, the level that I'm looking at around that is probably around the 64, five, 65,000. I'm, I'm pretty yes. sure we will kind of bottle bottom out around, um, that kind of area. And, um, I mean, barring any like crazy black swan events, world war three being called or anything like that, but sorry, we can't, um, we can't really call that. Um, oh, I don't see that in the I don't see that kind of in in the charts really for this period to be honest so no. um yeah no. I felt more of those vibes last year I felt like in 2023 when we were going through the astrology um and you know continuing on this on this podcast and bringing them up there were some like kind of more intense Mm. trends that's happening back then that if something was to happen I felt like it could have happened in 2023 Mm. but I I just don't see it at the moment nothing that has come into my you know I don't see it in the next two weeks I can vouch for that (laughs) right (laughs) after that that, I'll keep you updated (laughs) yeah no no I mean and we had already mentioned it on here, like we have some interesting eclipses towards the end of the year. And yeah. we don't even almost like need to look at the astrology without with like, because we know like US elections, right? Like that's a very, very big theme. And there's a lot of different things happening, but we'll get to that when the time is the needed, because right now we're just going to enjoy cancer season and this Capricorn full moon. Um, which specifically for Bitcoin is happening in the fifth house. So the fifth house for financial astrology then brings up more themes even around like learning, knowledge acquisition and educational activities. So for Bitcoin, this could be, you know, related to more people understanding Bitcoin, educating themselves on Bitcoin. Um, But also the fifth house is uh, is ruled by leo and it's very much even about like the the public eye and the public view and perception of that so i feel like it is like a continuing to spread information on on bitcoin and crypto as a whole um so public perception broadening uh, broadening adoption as well And as well as like themes of creativity, innovation, think fifth house is also like super like playful and fun. Um, So just maybe even new learning tools that may come out in different parts of the world with Bitcoin. I mean, I did see that, for example, in El Salvador, um, in some schools, they're starting to actually like teach them about the Bitcoin miners and how to get it and how to start using it so you're starting to see those um those sort of themes come up um and just a big focus on education around bitcoin which i know claire and i just love in general (laughs) we love it um but then with uh capricorn's influence so it will bring in of course an additional layer of like structure discipline long-term planning Um, And this could also mean more structural changes. Um, But once again, it's more so like structure around like, how do we use this and how do we implement this for the long term? Mm -hmm. Um, Other important aspects that I see specifically for this full moon in Capricorn for Bitcoin is the moon is sextile, the natal Venus. So this is a harmonious um aspect like claire said you know we probably will see like a local bottom during this time and this uh, more uh harmonious aspect brings in the the bounce and that things will start to look a bit more positive from there specifically you know venus being the planet of money and financial opportunities i would say that's kind of like telling us hi might be a good time to look at your levels there and see if this is a good time for you to whether your dollar cost averaging into bitcoin or whatever it is that you're doing with that whatever your plan is this might be a good time to look at that um and also it can bring increased value to the asset so that's with the sextile venus so price uh, moving up in simple terms And uh, again, this is also for the public side of things. This is like a positive thing. So it's as if like that public representation or the way that Bitcoin will be viewed will be more harmonious. 
Then we also have the moon, as Claire said, it's like on very early degrees of Capricorn. And that's where uh, Bitcoin's natal Pluto is. So with this conjunction, you know, this is more intense transformations, deep transformations, lining up with that cancer volatility energy as well. Um, and this is also something that we continue to talk about, um, which just continues to be present and it's the power struggles. Um, so I think it's more so here, like the control over, you know, and we're experiencing it right now. Like they are trying to shake retailers out of the price out of Bitcoin, sorry, so that bigger players can buy up more. And that's being very represented even more with this um, Pluto conjunction. So I feel like we could get a bit more of like a sudden, what will feel like on maybe those shorter time, a smaller time frames, it might seem like a bit more of like a sudden drop in Bitcoin as we're coming into this Capricorn um, full moon. And I wouldn't worry about that, guys. Just remember the long-term plan, zoom out, because the rest actually looks quite... Um, quite positive um before we do get into actually like more of the longer term stuff the only other uh more challenging aspect that i see is venus so venus will be squared bitcoin's natal moon and opposition the natal mars of bitcoin so venus you know there it's just causing some tension maybe even some um, with the moon, you know, looking at the financial realities, maybe mm. of where it is that you are at, um, where Bitcoin is at, maybe coming to um, just more solid support, which we'll talk about after as well, because that's very shown in the outer planets. Yeah. Um, and maybe people having like mixed feelings around Bitcoin's value and its future. And that's very much that Pluto like, power struggle yeah making a little bit of people like feel like they're in fear and being like wow like are we really going to drop are we going back down to 30k and that's very real if you go look at twitter crypto crypto twitter crypto x whatever it's called now there are people that are like yeah we're shorting bitcoin to 30k and i'm like i don't know um so i be very careful around that fear that's being created mm -hmm. um and then with it being, with Venus being opposing Mars, I think that for us as investors as well, it's a very like, just be careful of internal conflict around this and that aggressive buying and selling and that kind of behavior. Don't fall into that because I do feel like with this aspect, it's just telling us that maybe especially more retail traders, people that are newer to this space might be a bit more, aggressive and emotional and trying to get in and out in and out um so really great time to step into that cancer stability that yes your emotions i think it's so important while we trade and invest to be in touch with our emotions but just be aware of them so that you can manage them accordingly um more from yeah. a, it's, a, it's more an acknowledging and a feeling of the emotions rather than a reacting based on them Yes. I think there's a big difference between that. Um, again, like nervous system regulation is such a big thing for me, but it's always taking that time to process those emotions rather than just being super reactive. And I think that there, there is a little concern around that during this season is that there may be some yeah. reactionary emotions a little bit. Yeah, a lot of that. And that's, I mean, even just that Venus um, square, the uh, sorry, oppos opposing the natal Mars, that's like very, very strong. I will actually just add as well, just one little more additional one to to put the more like positive spin on it, because I do overlook like that. This is actually quite harmonious. Like this is nice. This is yeah. this is a really great period. Um, Jupiter is also sextile, so harmonious aspect with the natal moon of, of Bitcoin. So I feel like that balances out those those tensions that are that are there if you choose to step into them. Um, and again, it's that public sentiment and that overall optimism that we will start to feel as we come out 
of uh, of this full moon. I think that will be very present. So it is a more optimistic outlook. Um, and if anything, you know, it encourages investors to really take the time to look during these periods. And yeah. I mean, lately there's been really great opportunities for some altcoin entries. Maybe if you're continuing yes. to diversify your portfolio or you want to scale in more in certain projects that you just didn't feel like you got enough of and you just want more of um at good prices i think that this was a um this is a good period of time for that as well yeah i agree i mean that's that's kind of what i've been doing these last couple of months is really like you know building my altcoin portfolio for what i want to take through the cycle and um we said it before we'll continue saying it don't worry we will let you know when we're not saying this but um, yeah, these kind of like the times where it moves down and we're in this channel, you know, take those opportunities at the bottom of the channel to um, build your bags, really. And um, yeah, I mean, that's not financial advice, obviously, but it's just my own personal perception and my own personal thoughts on it. Um, I don't see a 30K Bitcoin I probably would be pretty excited by a 30k Bitcoin at this point. I would be so happy. I'd probably would sell be... everything. Right? <laughs> like everything. But but <laughs> would you? No, would you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's... It was wasn't that long ago we were at 30k Bitcoin, you know? It wasn't that long and I didn't sell everything then. So you it know. wasn't that long ago that we were at 15k. Yeah. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so just be be conscientious about it, but don't be freaked out, I think. I mean, there are a couple of things like, I yeah, I also agree with you. I Look, I don't see us, I don't see all-time highs between this full moon and the next new moon by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't see, any, like, I don't see it being super dramatic either. Um, yeah. So we obviously, we have Mercury is in Cancer as well. Um, so this is again like the the balance between, and I I think that this is where the memes get it wrong, you know, about cancer energy. Like the memes mm. they're always showing, you know, and I love these memes by the way, but they're always just showing cancer as being super emotional, but they forget so that stability side of them that stability security side. And so I think that that's really like the focus of this time is like learning to manage both, like feeling your feelings, but not reacting to them. And I hope other market participants are listening to the Bitcoin Zodiac and are looking at that too. But like with Mercury, um, planet of communication and information, it really governs how information is conveyed and interpreted. So um, this positioning cancer is sort of, you know, suggesting that communication may be more emotionally driven, but also more intuitively driven as well. So um, there's a balance to be found there as well. Decision making and analysis is affected by Mercury as well. Um, it, Mercury affects yeah. our thinking process. And so in cancer, decisions, again, may be more influenced by feelings and personal experiences rather than just cold, hard facts. And there can be good and bad to that as well. You know, like there can be, that can be great to, to come from this place of personal experience, but is it from the wounded self or is it from the like higher self? And I think that we just need to keep that in check this season. So um, with, in terms of the effects on the financial markets, then we may see some emotional trading. They might, you know, investors, traders may react more emotionally to news and events. So definitely keep an eye out on those key news dates because they, they're they always kind of volatile, but they may be more volatile than usual. So um, wow. also really things being driven more by sentiment than by practicalities um so the the sentiment can really play a significant role in price action at this time and um but also a, a more heightened focus on safe haven assets and investments that sort of offer that security and stability so we see bitcoin as a safe haven asset the rest of the world is starting to catch up and um but you know definitely keep an eye on gold as well and oh, um, yeah 
know, real estate, things like that, that are they're really seen as long-term safe haven assets. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. And I wonder if that's already like, actually, we might circle back to this a little bit after, because I do have an interesting um, future, you know, transit that we should be keeping an eye out on. But I think gold is definitely something that more and more people should look into. Again, it's no financial advice. I just encourage you to go and look at it because especially as we are going through these shifts and changes um, in just our, our whole financial system everywhere around the world, everyone, every country is reevaluating like where are we at? What do we want to go and do moving forward? Whether it is something like CBDCs or you know, creating different currencies, moving away from the US dollar. So there's a lot of like restructuring, like transformation is such a key word. We're in the Aquarian age and at the start of the Aquarian age, like transformation is just occurring everywhere. Um, And, uh, you know, Bitcoin is amazing. We love Bitcoin. I mean, we bought the Bitcoin Zodiac. Uh, We don't marry it, but we love it for now, you know? (laughs) And, um... And, and it is a little bit conditional. It's a bit of a conditional love. But, um, you know, I personally love the idea of diversifying and looking at different assets and different safe havens. Um, so I would really be looking into gold as well during during these shifts in time. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, we had news this week. I mean, the 9th of June, I think it was. Um, that Saudi Arabia are not renewing their petrodollar deal with um the united states i mean this has been going on for decades um it is a huge underpinning of the american dollar for sure um not that i i'm saying that i think oh the dollar is gonna crash tomorrow or whatever i i don't my personal opinion is actually that the american dollar um continues to get stronger and actually takes out a lot of these other smaller currencies before it has its um moment with hard money aka bitcoin and gold um but i do feel like these sorts of things they ne- don't ne- didn't necessarily cause a massive like you know market crash or anything like that that everybody would notice but i think yeah. when we people look back at this period of time in history i think it will be like notable things like this that will be like oh this is this was pivotal um, and yeah. it's the things that come after that. And it's really interesting. I mean, Bitcoin even got a mention in that when they were talking about being open to other currencies. And, um, you know, that that would be a really interesting turn of events if Saudi starts accepting Bitcoin for oil. They already have agreed to accept yuan for oil. But I mean, would be pretty amazing um, step forward. Um, so we yeah. should see how that goes. Um, lots of things going on in Russia and India and all of these kind of things with the BRICS nations. But, um, you know, we shall see how this all plays out. It's fascinating to and watch. It really is. And that's like, like you said, like this is literally like transformational historical periods that we'll look back on in 50 years time and be like, wow, we like lived through that. And um I will just touch on it now, seeing as like we've we've brought it up. So yeah, Saudi Arabia, this, uh, and I think you're right. I think it was the 9th of June. Mm-hmm. They This was after a 50-year petrodollar agreement. So um, there was no new, like they just didn't sign anything new. And now they're accepting not just yen. I believe they're also accepting euro. Or you said, I'm you not sure which one you said. Chinese yuan. Yeah. Yuan, Hmm. yen, and the euro instead of exclusively the US dollar. And they also joined, so Saudi Arabia joined BRICS at the start of this year. I think it was like the end of January. So they're making very important shifts as well. For those that don't know, like Saudi Arabia's wealth is astronomical. (laughs) Like they are very, very wealthy. Um. And it's, yeah, it's interesting to see a lot of these new partnerships and these new avenues that they're opening up to. Um, And I do know that they also, uh, you know, are in discussion with, of course, China, but BRICS Nation about 
a creation of a new currency. Um, and I think we've touched on this before in the Bitcoin Zodiac, but like China has been buying up ridiculous amounts of gold, mm. um, which really just makes you think about like, hmm, okay, like what's what's their direction? And they have talked about potentially having a new currency, whether that's a CBDC or I don't know what, how they're going to do it, but um, and it being backed by gold. So yeah. it's it's really big times. And um, the main kind of transit that I'm looking at that, and we are already like talking like really a bit more like a long term here, but it's just nice to know that long term stuff so we can prepare in advance um, cool. is when Neptune moves into Aries. So Neptune at the moment is in Pisces and it's there until March 30th of 2025. So when we actually think about it, that's like in nine months time. It's not that long. And historically, Neptune moving into Aries is hyperinflation. So it's kind of like a, um, it, I like to look at it as like a preparation because we are already seeing, I mean, look at, look at what's going on. Look at just uh, what did you used to be able to buy for $10 or 10 of your own currency compared to now. Um, we really are losing buying power in a lot of, in, I think, every fiat currency that we currently have around the world. And the inflation is real. And Neptune, um, yeah, historically has proven to be a period of time where hyperinflation of specific worldwide key used assets occurs. And so it's going to be in Aries from March 2025 to October 2025. So we have kind of like that window um, and then it will uh, retrograde back in. Um, so that's going to be from October 2025 to January 2026. So we might have, I don't know, a cool off period um, mm -hmm. towards the end of that year. And then that's when it will, Neptune will officially move in to uh, Aries and that's until 2038. So who knows what we'll see by, by then, but, um, that's so interesting. So again, we say this like not cause we, we never want to create fear. We want to create awareness and just, yeah. uh, understanding of in advance, like, Hey, like these, this is just what's happening in our world. Uh, you know, it's not the strongest nor the fittest that survive, but it's those that have the ability to adapt, um, and that's what we want to do. We just want to adapt with the changing times. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting as well to sort of tie that hyperinflation sort of idea in as well. Um, you know, I really thought that we would have seen some at least one rate cut by now. Like I really did. I really, you know, I don't get it right all the time. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But I, you know, I am quite shocked that we haven't seen that. Obviously, we have remained the same for several of the FOMC meetings. Um, mm. But it sort of just more solidifies, you know, or confirms that I think that they, you know, that the Fed are really not concerned about um, the banking, the smaller area of the banking system and are very comfortable and actually very happy to continue to consolidate the US banking system. We also saw um, the FDIC, I think it's the FDIC's um, quarterly report, and there are 64, not major banks, um, they are smaller banks, smaller, more regional banks, um, at risk of insolvency and 500, I think it was 517 billion dollars in unrealized assets in the US banking system. So um, I, if the Fed wanted to relieve some pressure from the banking system, they would have pivoted by now. They would have had yeah. a recap by now. And so the fact that they haven't kind of confirms to me that they don't really want to relieve the pressure. They're quite happy to continue to consolidate those smaller regional banks into the big four and um, further consolidate the US banking system. So um, yeah. it's not great because we don't like further centralization of power. But um, again, it's not something that I say to like um, to bring fear or anything like that, but it's all of these small, well, none of them are small things in my opinion, actually. 
but they're all sort of just chipping away at that narrative. Like, as I said, you know, before about the petrodollar, okay, yeah, so we didn't see like 2008 style market crash crisis that gets freaks everyone out. But it's all of these things are just kind of like chipping away at the US dollar dominance. And, um, you know, we're just sort of seeing that unfold. And um, definitely one to keep an eye on as well is the euro dollar market, because the euro dollar market is basically the market for US dollars outside of the US. And that is actually a far greater market than the demand for dollars within the US. So um, these are all sort of pivotal structures um for us dollar dominance and so definitely have a huge impact on um the way that our world functions and the way that we move forward and i definitely see changes and people think that i'm crazy when i talk about bricks but i because you know for a long time now i'm kind of like there is something going on here like the i do, do not there underestimate is. china or India, like just like it's not, it's not a good idea to under a, uh, estimate the Chinese or the Indians. Like it's not a good idea. And yeah, again, prefacing that with like, do I think that China are going to rule the world or something tomorrow? No, I don't. Um, but I think what I would hope to see through this kind of like BRICS alliance and, you know, reduction in the dollar dominance. Is, is more of a decentralization of power, a decentralization of power structures. So it's not that China are gonna take over the US's place and be the dominant superpower in the world. Maybe that happens, I don't know, but I think it's less likely to happen. And I think there will be more, um, it'll be a multipolar world um, that we live in where there is power that is distributed between lots of superpower nations or several superpower nations. And I actually personally think that that's a good thing, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Decent decentralize everything. Decentralize everything. <laughs> please, uh, please. Uh, where do we sign for that? <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. So definitely guys, Mark, March, of 2025 in your diaries we will obviously go deeper onto the uh, like astrology around that time as well the the other transits that are that are happening at that time but definitely want to keep an eye on a mark in your diary as well and um, even now we have um, Venus in Cancer so we have you know in financial astrology Venus like represents wealth and what we find attractive and what we find valuable so when venus is transiting through cancer it like merges with these cancerian qualities of emotion intuition and home and security as we have had on repeat this episode um but venus venus looks really at wealth and value and it governs money investments and what we value so its position can really affect sentiment and the attractiveness of certain assets. So um, Venus also influences how we connect with others and partnerships we form. So that can sort of impact, um, a, you know, the more market dynamics and investor behavior. So in Cancer, that's much more of a like homey, nurturing vibe to it rather than like a, a strategic or you know aggressive kind of nature nature to those partnerships so um we may see some of those things in um coming out one of the things that i'm really interested in is how wall street is going to view ethereum as a product and how that mm. sort of fits into their investment strategies it's going to be really interesting to see how they label that brand that and so I kind of feel like that relationship could could come into to that um, that sort of area as well. So, um, yeah, so I think it's going to be more of a focus on preference for like stable, safe haven assets again, um, prioritizing security over high risk or speculative investments. Yeah. So not sure that it's going to be alt season just yet. Um, yeah. but, um, more again, like as Corinne said, focus on gold, focus on Bitcoin and, um, 
you know, those sort of more more stable safe haven assets, I think, are going to be more at the forefront of people's attention during this time. Yeah. And, you know, I'm glad that you brought up Ethereum um, because I do have a little bit on what's occurring with the full moon and Capricorn for Ethereum. Um, it's occurring. It's in, in Ethereum's second house. So, you know, that's where investors might actually gain a clearer understanding of the long-term value proposition around Ethereum, potentially leading to decisive actions in, in the market. So that already like really aligns with what you said with, I wonder what Wall Street's doing with Ethereum and what they want to do with Ethereum and how they want to even propose it to, to investors. Um, so that also brings an increased institutional interest in or even actions that they want to take around um, Ethereum. And of course, with this then being in Capricorn and think Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Saturn is the planet, um, you know, that emphasizes structure, discipline, responsibility, long term goals, very similar traits that we see with Capricorn. Mm. Um and so I think it's going to be a lot around the developments related to Ethereum's infrastructure. It's a technological advancements, maybe even security improvements, but also just a general like higher interest in how are they going to use this? And now that there is an ETF for Ethereum, um, but I'm also starting to see a lot of even businesses and corporations starting to be like, huh. So how do we start to shift into using Ethereum? How do we use, maybe not even offering it as a product, but more so like how can we use Ethereum's infrastructure to incorporate it into our businesses and make our businesses uh, maybe even more efficient by using the blockchain, by using a second layer DAP to improve something within our business. So there's a lot of like chatter around that. Um, and there was also a really beautiful um, trine with the, this full moon and the natal Venus of Ethereum. And um, I love Venus energy. I think it's, it's my rolling planet. It makes me so happy. But it's just such a feel, like it's such a beautiful, like feel good, like love and yeah, and all the beautiful things in life. Yeah. But um, it brings like a really positive sentiment to um, the market or the investors and how they feel around Ethereum. I think that there's an increasing confidence and optimism around that. And, um, and also a period of like a little bit of stabilization as people get introduced to, okay, Ethereum is here, is present. Now let's really think about how we're going to implement it. So like an attraction, that's what I'm looking for. Like people are starting to get more attracted to Ethereum. So it's uh, I think we're starting to line up for even more of a favorable time around Ethereum. I think when they approved the ETF, nobody was really ready. Like the feel, like the mood around it was very different to when we had the Bitcoin ETF. Like there was such a big buildup around yeah. the Bitcoin ETF being approved. And when then Ethereum happened, we were like, oh, okay, cool. Here it is. But like, who's really ready for this? Um, and that's why I also feel like we didn't see as much of like a a push as we expected it to. I mean, if you look at um, the ETH BTC chart, you know, if you took profits from Ethereum into Bitcoin uh, right before or on the day that the ETF was approved, uh, mm. that was probably a good short term uh, profit taking. Yeah. But Ethereum will have its time. It'll it'll come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will. I mean. I think um again in like in terms of like network effects and things like that um I don't think anyone comes anywhere close to ethereum um and I mean apart from bitcoin oh, yeah. I'm talking in terms of the alt space and the the layer 1 space like looking it, it'll be interesting to see how the other layer ones perform this cycle. Obviously, Solana, again, in terms of network effects and developers building on the network, Solana is um, really interesting. It's fast, it's cheap, but there are some other, you know, Aptos is very interesting. Sui is very interesting. And so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they will have their moment this cycle as well. So. Um, that remains to be seen, but I don't think like I'm not one of these people that thinks there's going to be tons of layer ones. I think we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum. I think there's going to be another that um, 
that is the, the cheap um cheap super fast but not quite a secure option and so it'll be interesting to see when we look back in history at which one of those um you know that that is um that get that really gets adopted and pushes through from there um but yeah I mean so I think that all of those sorts of things are quite interesting what do you think the next ETF launch is going to be okay so there's obviously lots of talk around Solana yeah. And I remember like already in 2023, we saw Vernec already starting to talk and propose like an, a Solana ETF. Mm -hmm. um, so I do feel like that sounds and seems like the next logical ETF. Um, apart from that, I mean, I've mentioned Link in the past, but just because of how much like collaborations Link is doing with like... The ecosystem, yeah. Yeah. So I think that will be another big one. Um, I used to think XRP, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Do you have additional thoughts to that? No, I just watched something funny. The reason I said it, I just watched something funny this week um with Arthur Hayes and Raul Paul, two of my like favorite crypto or bitcoin analysts and um they were talking they think that they were half joking they were saying that they think it would be really ironic but they they're predicting by the end of the year that there'll be a dogecoin etf <laughs> dogecoin yeah. is the memes are dogecoin. moment right it has um, no utility I know. like that that's the thing that blows my mind. Like if we're talking about like they literally just want something to make money out of, like. But that is oh, the qualification. I, That's what they were saying. Because that right. is the qualification for Wall Street. That's literally That's, it. And I mean, maybe, I mean, I've even heard like Charles Hoskinson's be like, you know, um, Doge is there and just waiting for somebody to actually do something with it. Like, well, I know, think that's um, what the thought process is, is that everyone anticipates Elon doing something with it, right? Exactly. But who knows? Like, I, I mean, just it was hilarious. It is pretty funny. I <laughs> mean, hats off to them if that ends up like happening. I don't even know if we're going to see a next ETF come until 2025. Like, I don't know if, um, I think they now with Bitcoin and Ethereum being approved um, by the US, so, you know, I just think that's such a focus right now. Um, I'm sure that's already helped uh, the presidential elections enough with their goal as to why they wanted them to be approved so quickly. Um, so I feel like, you know, and the next thing anyway for the presidential election is, uh, you know, uh, I have it up here. Uh, Donald Trump uh, says that the remaining Bitcoin must be made in the USA. So Donald Trump now really wants to focus on Bitcoin mining in the US and, um, you know, claiming his hatred of Bitcoin. What's that? His statements are so funny, though, because it's just like it's this whole thing. It's like he thinks that it's manufactured in the U.S. and it's like Bitcoin manufactured. It's like, dude, it's like this is not how it works. This isn't how it works. You can't. Exactly. Oh, I know. He's so and, that's, and that's what we were talking about last episode, right? Like the shift in sentiment from the U.S. politics sentiment to Bitcoin this time around is just so entertaining. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, like I, I will read this out loud. So it's like verbatim what I'm reading on The Hill. So it's one of the many that has come out right now, like articles on it. And Trump wrote Wednesday on social, on Truth Social, we want all the remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. It will help us be energy dominant. This could be the last line of defense against CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, as the world's largest CBDC pilot is currently being led by China. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want us to become a radical communist left. Communist left. So, so 
Um, it's just entertaining. I mean, it's good for us because it's bringing more awareness around Bitcoin. And maybe that is this whole fifth house, like starting to really learn and understand and become educated on Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe Trump needs to watch a few of our episodes, maybe read the Bitcoin standard and He's that might help him. But I think, um, you know, in, in a way, though, that there are some of the things that he said in there that I do really agree with. And mm. people say that I have fully swallowed the orange Kool-Aid and I'm definitely indoctrinated in the Bitcoin cult, if you, if you want to say that. But I do believe okay. that um, the countries that hold the most Bitcoin will, I think it will be a, a factor in dominance at some point in time. Whether that's in my lifetime, I don't know. But um, I do definitely, so I do kind of agree with him um, in, in that, in that respect, um, that it yeah. will be a factor in dominance. And so, yeah, I think it's funny that he thinks that I just love the way that Donald Trump communicates makes me laugh so much because he's just so confident. Like, I bet you he is a manifester in human design. Like, he just says things as if they are decrees. We will be manufacturing the remainder of Bitcoin in America now, and it's like uh, there's a there's a process to that. Like that, that's not really how that works, bro. But, <laughs> like you know, even though, like I said on last episode, I do think this is a bit of a vote grab, um, but yeah. I do like the direction that it's going in, you know. Yeah. And I think that it's it's kind of is an interesting sort of play on democracy because. His focus on Bitcoin is because there are a lot of the we the people that are focused mm. on Bitcoin. So it yes. has made him turn the attention on Bitcoin, which you know is is I think an interesting turn of events as well. And I think it can only be a good thing for America um, to to yeah. go down that path. And um, I do agree also with what he's saying in regards to the CBDCs. I think that. America is actually, because of the system of Congress in America, um, that they, the system that they have there, the checks and supposed checks and balances doesn't always work out that way. Um, but I think that America is more aware of the fact that the power a CBDC would give the Federal Reserve mm. of the actual government, um, yeah. you know, um, that that I think that they're much more aware of that than other countries just sort of blindly walking into that. But also the setup of the Federal Reserve is slightly different to the setup of, say, for example, in Australia, um, even the, um, the Australian Central Bank it is operated as a separate entity to the government, but it is wholly mm. and solely owned by the um, Commonwealth of Australia. So, um, you know, it is it is a little right. bit different, um, different. To, to the way that it's set up in America. So, um, but I do want to just like, it just reminded me of this quote that I'd written down in my notes ages ago, actually, and I just haven't had an appropriate time to use it. But I think... Donald Trump may be quite aware of this dynamic that um, Mayor Amschel Rothschild said a long, long time ago, probably about 100 years ago, he's considered to be kind of the, the forefather of central banking, really. And he said, let me control a nation's money supply, and I care not who makes its laws. So as long as he has, con I mean, he's he's not with us anymore. But as long as whoever controls the money supply, it doesn't matter whether who's in power. It doesn't matter if it's Democrat, yep. doesn't matter if it's Republican, doesn't matter if it's Donald Trump, Biden, or Kamala Harris, or whoever possibly could be, Gavin Newsom, whatever. RFK uh, Jr. RFK Jr. is still probably top of my preference list these days. Don't love his stance on Israel, but he's still probably oh. top of my preference mm -hmm. list. 
Um, mm. But yeah, I think what Donald Trump is sort of saying there in regards to his CBDCs is he's really aware of that dynamic that if the Federal Reserve controls the money supply, um, which they already kind of do um, in tandem with the Treasury, but um, they don't care who makes its laws because they run the show. And so I think, you know, um, having a central bank digital currency really gives them t- more power than Donald Trump would like to relinquish. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I have a couple more little transits. The only other one I really wanted to um, draw attention to was Mars and Taurus. So, um, you know, Mars action, drive, aggression, and energy um, transiting f- through Taurus. Um, so merging with those qualities of stability, persistence, and materialism. Um, Mars really drives like action and initiative. So it this placement kind of indicates like how energy is directed and where where effort is applied. So um, it does come with this like aggression and competition. And Mm -hmm. um, so Mars can bring this competitive edge, you know, influencing aggressive market behavior um, and investment strategies. And then that's combined, like contrasted with the stability and persistence of Taurus, really known for its like steady, persistent nature and seeks security and is resistant to rapid change. Um, so also though Taurus like is associated with the material world, with wealth, what is considered valuable and emphasizes these tangible results and long-term gains. So I think that we could see like with this transit, we could see a steady and cautious approach. Um, so like this, bringing in that Taurus energy, that deliberate, steady approach to investing and long-term focus and value. Um, again, more n- tying in again to this focus on tangible assets, um, you know, stable, valuable assets, real estate, commodities, maybe blue chip stocks, Bitcoin. Um, but we could see some consolidation. Like, st- again, this is like, telling us a story of stabilization and consolidation in Bitcoin's price action. Um, so less that sort of, to me, balances out that volatility that we're seeing with maybe Mercury and Cancer, yeah. that emotional kind of volatility. Yeah. So I'm seeing kind of like flat flatlining a little bit um, right. and, you know, more incremental growth than sudden spikes. So I think that that's like contrasting energy to mercury and cancer Uh, and maybe will give some groundedness to maybe more emotional reactions to news and communication Um, and sort of in terms of action which is what Mars is responsible for I think we're likely to see more slow stable steady um, steady action which is also really aligned with the Capricorn full moon too Um, and and it's a nice shift out of that Mars being in Aries. Mm-hmm. Like we just yeah. came out of like Mars and Aries, Mars and Taurus now. And you really feel that in the market. You really see that in the market, just the shift that we've uh, we've had. And I think that also, you know, as we continue to kind of like zoom out and look at these outer planets, and mm-hmm. this is an aspect that we had brought up in past episodes, but I think it's important to like revisit it because it is a longer term uh, aspect that's occurring um, and I feel like this is also uh, a continuous like confirmation of like, hey, we had our opportunities to, to break above that 70K, 72K, whatever the all time high was. Um, and we just we kind of like not that we missed the boat. It just like wasn't the time there. Mm-hmm. And so now we are shifting into that more like steady and um, that has also been represented with uh, Saturn is conjunct the natal uh, Uranus of Bitcoin. And at the same time, it's been in opposition, the natal Saturn. So it's Mm -hmm. such an interesting, uh, you know, every time I look at Bitcoin's like birth chart, I think it's so interesting that it even has uh, in its natal Saturn and Uranus like opposition, uh, opposing each other. And now we've got the transiting Saturn that's there 
And, you know, you've got Saturn, that's like that structure, stability, discipline, and then Uranus, that's innovation, disruption, and sudden changes. And so with Saturn transiting through that, it's like, hey, we're just creating like that, uh, that structure, that uh, stability, that I always kind of say, it's like the support and resistance of like, uh, it's just going and creating and finding that really strong support that we just aren't going to break below um, at least anytime soon. And as we go move into, into the bull run uh, or continue through the bull run, because we've already done amazing percentages, but um, it's just like creating that, that solid stabilization period. Everybody like get your ducks in a row during this time. Um, but it also signifies um, like a, a clash between what we have as traditional structures and then our innovation and where we want to head to in the future. And we're feeling that a lot, that backwards and forwards uh, right now with, you know, Saturn is like discipline and Uranus is like freedom and innovation and it's like quite rebellious too. So uh, we're really feeling that. And for Bitcoin, you know, as it goes through this regulatory period, uh, even just, again, that structure, how are we going to use Bitcoin or what are we going to do with it? Um, and uh, hopefully continued, you know, interest in, in Bitcoin. And I feel like, you know, we've still got a while while this transit moves through and it's a it's a pressure on the innovation and uh, have like it's the pressure of yes innovation but within a controlled framework right. so those are just very current uh pressures for the structure and compliance that we're feeling around bitcoin even though it does just want to break out and run and be innovative and be that rebel um that's that's a really important outer yeah. transit that we just continue to to go through yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Speaking of these other um, sort of more outer planets, um, looking at Neptune on the 22nd of June, so same day as the new moon, um, mm -hmm. 21st, 21st in America, um, we have transiting Neptune, Quincux, Bitcoin's natal Neptune. And um, the Quincux, I just find kind of interesting because I think I don't really hear a lot of other people talking about it. But it is quite um, like it, it kind of seems to it does seem to be like poignant times for Bitcoin. And so like especially with something like Neptune represents illusion, confusion, idealism and the disillusion of boundaries. So, mm. um, yeah, I think that this uh, Quincux aspect suggests like this need. It also the thing that I like to look at with it is it's like it suggests this need for adjustment um, and can like can create some unease or misalignment. So it's always areas that we like need to readjust. And so when it when we see that in the markets, there's maybe times of correction or consolidation, that kind of thing. So I just think that they're really interesting to look at. And so, yeah, as I said, with with Neptune's influence, it's always like illusion and confusion. Neptune like kind of blurs reality, making it quite difficult to see things clearly and can lead to misunderstandings or false perceptions. So it mm -hmm. also brings this like idealism and hope and it can bring it like not in a good way. Like it's it's mm -hmm. more about unrealistic ex expectations over optimism and potentially driving like quite speculative behavior so um as i said the quincunx kind of suggests adjustment and realignment so um it necessitates adjustments and it brings situations that require rethinking or reworking for existing strategies can bring some tension and unease um so and some discomfort so maybe leading to some uncertainty and indecision um and when I sort of look at like indecision then it's it's kind of just this you know yeah. very annoying yeah. consolidation periods um yeah. but in terms of like general market trends we can so there is there, I think there will be some you know uncertainty which even around the full moon in general we usually kind of see a little bit of that so, but more in terms of 
uncertainty from this perspective of confusion and mixed signals. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, investors might struggle to discern clear trends. Um, and, you know, I leading from one side overly cautious or, or to the other side of erratic behavior. So um, Neptune's influence can drive like speculative behavior and some investors taking risk based on extreme optimism, idealistic projections, um, you know, rather than solid fundamentals. So for Bitcoin, again, like Bitcoin is like known for its volatility and, you know, may experience those heightened fluctuations at that time. So maybe some sudden price swings around that full moon, um, both upwards and downwards are on the table <laughs> either yeah. way. So, um, yeah, again, because of this like Neptune on Neptune influence, you know, there really may be some misleading signals um, that, you know, might not be as reliable as as we used to. So it's making like technical analysis a little bit um, more challenging, let's say. And um, so just be careful, like in terms of seeing like false breakouts or um you know unexpected reversals they either way may be short-lived so I think it's just worth keeping an an eye on that too and recognize this sort of illusionary influence and sort of like ask ourselves hey am I seeing this clearly am I you know um or am I in some work murky illusionary waters here so um yeah I think that for that period of time yeah. And, you know, it's been so interesting, like how Neptune has been going through Pisces for quite some time. And just think about like even and, and Pisces, may I add, is is ruled by Neptune. So, yeah. you know, the illusion, disillusion, maybe those false expectations kind of can be very represented in Pisces. And so you have that double effect that yeah. I I feel like our our world has been feeling like so many people are very confused about what's going on. Like, where are we headed? Like, um, it's just, yeah. Confusion. Confusion is a big word. Like you go out and you talk to, uh, people and they, there's a lot of uncertainty, confusion. Uh, we've obviously seen, uh, I think we continue to see illusion in how healthy the econo economy is right now, just because it's been an election year. Um, so yeah, there's, that's been very felt. Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of illusions around that as well. And I think, yeah, um, yeah in terms of, it's also the, a place to find some surrender because I think, look, none of us like to be confused. None of us like to confusion. We, we, and especially in the markets, markets hate confusion. We like clarity. We like certainty. And as human beings, but I think also like Neptune's influence does sort of bring, especially in Pisces, does just bring this period of time that it's like, you, you, you sometimes are not going to know. Sometimes you can't figure it out. And those are those moments of just surrender and go, okay, these are crazy times. And so it, it's like, instead of like leaning into the duality of everything, I'm pro this, I'm against this, I'm on this team, yes. I'm red, I'm blue, I'm like, whatever. It's more just take a step back and go, you know what? I don't actually know right now, but I know that clarity mm -hmm. will present itself. Like nothing lasts forever. And we will come out of the confusion. But at the moment, I can just take a step back and go, you know what? I actually just don't know the exact answer. And that's okay. It's so uncomfortable for us as human beings to sit with that energy. But, um, you know, it is what it is. It's presented to us. And, um, yeah, we have to make the best of it. So the last sort of thing that I wanted to talk on again is another little quincunx. At the end, just before this new moon, and um, it's Saturn, Quincunx, Bitcoin's natal Mercury. And so it, this is on the 3rd of July. So just before that new moon. Um, mm. And so if ever there was a time when you need to question your motives, it's it's now. So it's this. And, and remember, this is like Bitcoin's natal chart. So it's really like Bitcoin estab like establishing its motives that doesn't quite make sense, but it, you you can kind of like lean into that. 
um, energy. So it's a period of time which you can communicate your truth and integrity. Misunderstandings from the past may need to be healed before you can establish rapport with others. So what I kind of get from this, this um, transit is really... And we've we've talked about this before. It's really like establishing who Bitcoin is, what it's here for, why it came, why it was created. You know, we've attached a lot of other random things to Bitcoin, um, which is fine. You know, we've added leverage to a 70 vol asset like we are insane. But, um, like, you know, we we've wow. added a lot of these things. But again, it's this period of like we need to heal those wounds and like really be about like what Bitcoin is about in its sort of truth and integrity and um, sort of releasing those sort of like wounds of the past. I don't really know what that could be, but like times when there's, you know, that people have scammed people with Bitcoin or, you know, we've had, we've had all of the things of the last cycle, um, you know, where people were lending their Bitcoin and, you know, to a centralized entity, like, this wasn't what Bitcoin was created for. I mean, even the fact that we use exchanges, I mean, it is really convenient, but Bitcoin was designed as a peer-to-peer -peer, um, system. It wasn't really designed to be like used through, and I'm not saying don't use exchanges. I'm not saying that at all, but it's sort of like we we do need to alight, like question our motives and also like Bitcoin's motives and, you know, communicate that in truth and integrity. And I hope that we succeed in doing that on the Bitcoin Zodiac. We really do try our best in doing that. Um, we don't go along with like the hypey things on YouTube and we 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 always want to stay in our integrity and our truth in that. But when Saturn, you know, really represents structure and discipline, limitations and long-term planning, and then you've got Mercury, which we've already discussed, you know, communication, information, processing and decision-making. So it's like it introduces this period of, Again, the quincunx is suggesting a time of re readjustment and reevaluation, um, some possible unease or misalignment again. And so, you know, we need to like look, I think, as the Bitcoin community, how we're communicating. And um, Saturn's kind of like, you know, here to set some rules and some boundaries and teach some lessons. And so I'm thinking we might see that be a theme um, around the beginning of July as well. Um, like, really, what do we stand for as the Bitcoin community? What are we aligned to? And um, yeah, I think that, that that's... I, I'm it's unusual because we would usually sort of see a pump into the new moon but I think that this is this is an area where we could see a correction just pre yeah. new moon yeah I um actually looked up that uh just some news and what's going on around that time as well mm. so you said on the 3rd of July right so that is the US ISM services that PMI. So that's the supply management services. Um, so that's like the monthly index that assesses the performance of the US service-based companies. So that's coming out on the 3rd of July. And then right before that new moon on Friday, the 5th of July, we have the US average hourly earnings for the month. We have, once again, the U.S. non-farm employment change and the U.S. unemployment rate. Um, so those are quite significant, um, you know, events that or news that is being released right before that new moon, um, which is interesting. You know, I also don't really see like a, a next new pump coming anytime soon. This is just a period of um if anything once again let's go back to that relationship thing like butterflies aren't aren't always good sometimes yeah. it's this periods of times that we really really need um to create something healthy and stable and long term yeah and I think when we zoom out as well when we look at this period of consolidation that we've been in for the last like what couple of months yeah um, you know, when we zoom out and look at it on the higher time frames, you can really see also Bitcoin's price coiling. It has this like coiling kind of momentum and it's just building that momentum. 
And so don't worry, guys, we will get a bull run. It we will oh, get yeah. a crazy god candle and we'll all go, oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> exactly. So get ready. This get is ready. your sign. This is, this this is, is your yeah. sign. This is a sign yeah. from the universe. Um, yeah, and to use this opportunity well. I think there will be a point in this cycle where we're gonna go, wow, can you believe that we were at 70k? You know, and um, you know, and look yeah. back on that and wish we were back at 70k. So um, you know, like we do now with 30. Yeah, like we exactly, exactly. And at 30, we were like, it's going to 10. I want it to be 10, you know. Um, but to sort of close off oh. also on some like I well, this is just closing off the news. I think you have some other things to share as well, but like um, I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to mention it because I spoke about um, the Japanese central bank and the swap lines being opened with the US and um, the other day. And to me, that's like such a warning sign about the Japanese yen. It's like a, it's a big concern. It's, I mean, it's, it's been a red flag for, for quite some time, to be honest, but um, yeah, it was, it's quite a big concern. And so it's interesting to see some of these articles that have come out this week um dubbing their company called meta planet um asia's micro strategy so they have been buying bitcoin they've been adopting sort of the michael saylor micro strategy option for um their company in terms of holding bitcoin in their treasury and um those sorts of things and so i just thought it was a really like interesting contrast that it's like hang on, how much can we really rely on our currency going forward? And, um, you know, they're bolstering their company's viability by putting um, Bitcoin on their treasury books. So, yeah, I just thought that was some positive news, exciting. And um, we've said it before as well. I think, like, it's so interesting to see Bitcoin adoption. It's like kind of the crazier the things that are happening in the country, especially with their currency, the more Bitcoin adoption, the more pro Bitcoin the actual citizens of that country are. Like Turkey has a huge um, Bitcoin, um, you know, demand, and places like Venezuela and Argentina and things like that. So it's interesting that kind of like there are some companies in Japan as well that are, are moving in that direction for sure. And think about it. I think that the trend there as well is like, okay, our currency has failed us. I mean, the Turkish lira, the, uh, you know, Venezuela, Argentina, all of these currencies. And now we also saw it with Japan. They just had these massive, massive crashes and they're like, okay, now let's turn and look at solutions. But that's why I always feel so fortunate that we are here and we already have this information so that we can plan in advance and do things in advance before we get to that point of OMG, panic, reaction, quick, like what are the solutions? So yeah. I'm always very, very grateful for that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, so I also had... Um, Another outer planet, which we haven't touched on in a while, mm. and um, Pluto. Pluto mm. is now in retrograde in Aquarius. So, I mean, I feel like Bitcoin, we only got a really small slither of Bitcoin being with um, a Pluto in Aquarius in retrograde last year and it was kind of matching the energy that we're really feeling now like you right. know the we're not really like heading crazy to the upside I felt like that is more when Pluto is direct in Aquarius for Bitcoin um but right now we are in a retrograde it is kind of that little slowing down period um and so that actually started from May 2nd and will continue through and be in retrograde until October 11th and in that window of time, we actually have um, Pluto retrograding into Capricorn. Um, and that will be from the September 1st until the 19th of November. So we will see for the final time, probably in our lifetime, definitely in our lifetime. I mean, unless we end up living to be, you know, 500, 600 years old, like they used to in the Bible 
uh, days. Um, unless we see that it, in our lifetime, this is going to be the last time that we see Pluto move back into Capricorn. Um, and that's actually, you know, proven to be quite a positive time for Bitcoin. So um, we're retrograding back into that. And then when we will be stationed officially uh, with Pluto in Aquarius in November at the end of this year, we're then going to have Pluto stay in Aquarius until 2043. So this is so important. Once again, I know that we've mentioned it before. We'll continue to mention it because this is so long-term favorable for Bitcoin, for crypto, for technology, because um, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and these are really ruled technology and it's also very much about like the revolution so I feel like this is the revolution or like a technological revolution Pluto and Aquarius heralds a period of remarkable technological innovation and that's where we'll witness continue to witness breakthroughs with artificial intelligence biotechnology space exploration renewable energy you know um Tesla, PS, like I think that's just going to continue or electric vehicles in general um, and our reliance on digital platforms will continue to grow and see a rise of new forms of digital governance and currency, as we were talking about before, um, and fundamentally just reshaping our economic landscape through that. I think another important theme is the community and collective focus of Pluto and Aquarius. So this emphasizes the power of community and collective action. So seeing a surge in initiatives that are aimed at addressing global challenges, uh, you know, maybe things such as climate change, poverty, public health. I know that's a big, big discussion right now in Australia as well, um, and needing to find some solutions to the current problems that they have with the public health system. Um, and decentralization will become a key theme for this with the rise of networks, systems, uh, networks and systems that distribute power more evenly across society. So as Claire said before, like, let's decentralize everything. Um, Pluto and Aquarius is definitely favorable to that. And um, there's lots of other themes, but I think the two main last ones that I'd like to touch on is that this brings... And think of like Aquarius, so really like that Uranus energy is rebellious to the system. Like, you know, they they want to rebel against like everything that's the traditional system. And so I think we'll see a lot of transformations in that. We're already seeing it, a lot of dismantling of like outdated structures. So with Pluto there, you know, this will just be that energy of breaking down those systems that no longer serve us, that don't serve the collective good. And that would lead to, once again, economic, political and social upheavals. Um, however, this process of deconstruction is necessary for the new uh, and more effective structures to emerge. And that's what we're living through now. We're at the very first years of this transformation. We're living through the deconstruction of it all. And um, one thing that I love about this Pluto and Aquarius, and I guess just the Aquarian um, energy is, um, or the Aquarian age is like the psychological and spiritual awakening that we are seeing everywhere. Now there's obviously higher expressions and also very shadow expressions of this. Um, so it's very important for us to be aware around what uh, and who and the intentions behind uh, awakenings. Um, but this transit also sparks a profound psychological and spiritually a spiritual awakening where we'll see deeper understanding and healing, addressing collective traumas and subconscious patterns. And I feel like crypto has a really, or at least I'm going to talk on Bitcoin's behalf. I think yeah. a big part of Bitcoin is healing these, uh, these uh, traumas that we have around finances. Um, there will be a growing interest in spirituality and me metaphysical topics as we search for meaning and connection in a rapidly evolving world. And um, I love the saying that, you know, um, gold is physical, fiat is political, and Bitcoin is, yes, mathematical, but it's metaphysical. And I'm really excited about um, these transformations 
and the direction that we're headed in, but especially this healing. Um, it's just so beautiful to witness, so uplifting. Um, and I feel like, and I can speak for me personally, Bitcoin and the Bitcoin community has brought so much of that into my personal life. Um, and I'm really grateful for it because it's, it's been a big awakening in not just financial, but every single aspect of my life. Yeah, it's a really interesting quality, actually, that Bitcoin has. And I never, I never would have guessed before, you know, I really started to look into it. And, you know, I can say that for myself as well, like it has this way of, you know, taking you down the rabbit hole, and really yeah. on a journey of personal growth, like nothing to do with like money and you know, um, how, what I mean, nothing to do with how much money you have or what you can buy or whatever, nothing to do with that, but really a journey of personal growth of like challenging, like, what do I value? Like, what is important to me? What are my values? What, you know, how do I, what is the world? What does the world look like? The world that I want to live in, the world that aligns with my values and I would never have guessed that Bitcoin would take me on that journey, but it really has. And again, like, I'm so grateful too. I think it's so transformational. I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Satoshi. Um, you know, whoever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you are. Um, right. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, it's a really sort of magical thing. And I think, as well, there are sort of like, you know, we obviously grew up in the West. Um, you know, we grew up in, I grew up in Australia and the UK, you in Australia and Italy, and you now live in America. And so it's very easy for us to sort of, you know, we, we've we benefited from the money printer. Let's put, let's put it that way. We've grown up yeah. in it in a way, but there are many, many areas in this world that people have been so oppressed and um you know broken down by this system and you know i believe that it provides the incentive for war and things like that and it obviously creates a ton of other problems that we do need to collectively heal from and um you know bitcoin doesn't fix everything but um the way that we transact is so fundamental to our communities and our societies and um, our species as a whole and if that is corrupted it just leaches out into so many other areas and yeah like bitcoin isn't bitcoin isn't god bitcoin is not perfect and it makes me uncomfortable and people sort of do like worship bitcoin and speak about bitcoin like god but it is really really interesting it does have the power to transform and elevate our world and even just from a point of view of the way now I personally think our governmental structures and nation states are going to be restructured um, that's going to look very different in the future but even from the point of view now from our existing system the difference with bitcoin and our current system is that if you know in in a bitcoin world a government can only the only control they can have of bitcoin is how they is that they can tax it you know mm -hmm. they can't they can't inflate it and they they don't have that mechanism and um so i just find that really interesting and that like a huge step forward in um you know fairness really is 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 what it is about to be honest so um yeah i think we live in like such exciting times like it's so like what a time to be alive like it's so what a time yeah <laughs> it is it's wild times it's great times and um yeah I guess we we really signed up for these transformations I'm grateful that our our generations get to get to lead that get to be a part of that um and hopefully we've learned a lot from the past mm -hmm. and we can bring solutions and deeper healing and collective healing, uh, which I really feel like Bitcoin uh, is one of the components of this. Yeah. And that the Aquarian age and with starting off with that Pluto and Aquarius is really bringing into. Yeah, it's so exciting. Amazing. What a beautiful right. time to finish off. 
exactly finish off on beautiful energy well yeah. um a happy full moon in capricorn happy we'll full. um enjoy the enjoy the space and the the being at home in pajamas in cancer energy <laughs> lean into those emotions maybe watch the notebook or listen to some music that really draws out those emotions <laughs> peace enjoy. love and bitcoin peace love and bitcoin <laughs> <laughs>